to have created this lab. We're very grateful for your work, Sina. So you will be introducing things. The and only superpower I'm lagging is flying. So, so. <laughs> uh, welcome everyone. It's really great to see this many people. Uh, the lab opening finally. Uh, I've I've been. I have to turn off this. Sorry. It's, I have been ha having this this idea of opening an open lab for everyone for like almost like a decade now, and it's really good to finally be here. Uh, but realizing that the hard work starts now, uh, so I really don't have anything more to say than this to start everything, uh, and the plan is to have some presentations during this first hour and then during the second hour we will check out the lab probably in groups because there is so many people here uh, but yeah just let's start and first person is uh, Linda CEO of things thanks Ina. Uh, so again welcome to things I would say um, we are uh, company running the house, the full house. Um, things, can you see back there? It's a bit light here, but okay. So, so Things is, um, that's a house. We have four, 2,000 square meters. It's initiated by Sting. Do you know what Sting is? Not who, but what? Yeah. Yeah, so it's one of the, uh, I would say, one of the best incubators. It's been ranked as the fourth <coughs> best incubator in the world, so that's pretty cool, I would say. Uh, they used to have an office over at Teknik Ringen, which, which they closed when we opened. Uh, they're behind us. We want to be an <coughs> ecosystem for hardware startups. And that's really our niche, the hardware part, <coughs> the hardware world. Um, companies apply to us to sit here. Uh, we have three levels of uh, open co-work areas and offices. We have a workshop and so on. And um, to be frank, the main reason that we have to decline companies is because they don't have any link to hardware. So our requirement is that you uh, produce yourself, develop and produce something, or work with a third party hardware solution as a part of what you offer your customers. Uh, we want to build the whole ecosystem here. Uh, we just started, we opened two months ago, so we're just starting now. But we want to have, um, when we talk about hardware, we talk about Internet of Things, 3D printing, 3D scanning, um, digital health, um, wearable devices and so on. It's, um, it's supposed to be a living place. So it's a lot of, um, I mean, the house is a really crucial part to this. So the house is a place where we all can meet. Uh, and the room you're in right now, which is called the lounge or the kitchen, is where the members of Bionifica, the members of Makerspace, and the members of, of Things can all meet in one place. Uh, we also have industry partners that you can see in the, when you enter the house. Uh, I'm really impressed with the, the group that we got in, uh, and I can't take any credit for that. It's all due to Per I would say, the CEO of Sting. Uh, we have Asa Bloy, we have ABB, um, uh, Husqvarna, NCC, so it's really big companies. And we have a uh, connection to KTH, obviously, as we're located here. Um, in two ways so far, we work with KTH Innovation, and we have um, an agreement with the prototyping facilities here at KTH. So we have a small workshop in the house, but that will not be enough for whatever you need. And then we can work together with KTH to actually benefit from all the machinery around the area. We can never fit that, we can never afford it ourselves. Um, also, like I mentioned, Makerspace and BNE Faken is here. Um, the prototyping facilities and the workshop. We have, uh, we are not an incubator. So Sting is an incubator providing a coach and taking equity in the company. We're not doing that, um, but a lot of our companies are part of the Sting Incubator. Uh, I would say probably about one third of the companies in the house right now is actually thanks to, to Sting. So the house, 
this stuff has moved a bit since uh, I sent it over. You probably recognize the picture, some of you. I thought it was really beautiful, so I couldn't uh, resist having it here. In short, we have uh, 2,000 square meters on four floors, three for the companies, which we call members, and one, the basement, is for maker space and being if you can. Uh, on this floor we have uh, the lounge cafe, which is, like I said, open to the BNA Fikin members as well. Uh, and upstairs we have, um, well, uh, also we have the workshop on this level. But that is only for things members, not for the BNA Fikin or makerspace people. Um, the higher up you come in the house, the more offices and the bigger offices. So on this level we have probably like eight meeting rooms and a lot of like bustling and moving around and then the further up you go less co-working space and more offices. We're three people running this. I'm the CEO of it. Then we have Magnus Melander who is um, very well known in the IoT world and Carolina who is uh, taking care of the space. So um, there's an area upstairs of this size and that is the only area that is available for external events. Uh, and if you want to do that, Carolina is the one to talk to. Here's uh, the current companies. We have, uh, we opened formally two months ago, and by now we have 20 companies um, sitting in the house, uh, which we're very proud of. And I think we have space for about 20 more companies. Uh, we can fit in about up to 200 people uh, if we really squeeze it in small rooms and uh, I think 20 more companies could fit in here. Uh, and our partners, um, I mentioned some of them, then we also have SCB as a partner for us. Sting of course, Akademiske Hus is the one we rent the facility from. And we have a short contract because they're going to tear down the building, at least that's what we hear right now. Uh, end of 17, we have to be out. So three years we have to really like um, build it up, create the community. Hopefully we can stay longer, you never know with the processes. Um, but that's the plan so far. A couple of technology partners and networking partners as well. And I would say the networking partners, it's all about creating, you know, the community, making sure that we link up to the other guys who are active in the space, um, give them access to the house, uh, we try to make sure this place, even if we're not involved in it, make sure that the right people are in the house. We want to have events here every day. Uh, and so far I think actually that we have rent out the um, event space. We probably have act activities almost every day and we rent it probably out like uh, two or three times a week already. And I think that's, um, I wanted to keep it short, so that's all I, I wanted to say about things. Any questions? If you have any companies here uh, that are interested, you can go into our webpage. Um, I don't have any contact details here, of course, that would be too easy. Uh, Thingstockholm.com, one S in the middle. Uh, and there is a short application form. That's a way to, to get in if you, if you think it fits you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you going to talk about how we built the lab and show you the transformation of it. Uh, it all started with uh, Makerspace wanting to move from their old space uh, and that was like a golden opportunity for us to to build a bio lab because this was a lab. Uh, so uh, we made arrangements and uh, we started and started this was the first look when we came into it and uh, you you would know they wouldn't have taken care of it because the floor had like layers and layers of salt on it and 
it, it really took I don't know how much work for the guys to with citric acid to dissolve the salt and wash it away luckily we had this to wash away everything but uh, yeah I think the floor was one of the worst uh, parts of it and yeah this is from the other view uh, was a lot of holes in the walls then we started working on it and there were some points I didn't know if we were, would if we were making progress or if we were going backwards but uh, I think this this is some part of this was some part of the progress uh, we got some furniture in it then we cleaned up the walls what we painted the walls put put putty on the walls painted it uh, we started with the first stuff the freezer incubator uh, microwave of course for the billy pan pizzas uh, that's a joke for everyone who's not in the lab <laughs> yeah. after that we started getting offers from companies uh, to to yeah they would wanted to donate lab equipment to us and we started the moving process uh, that was really one of the most stressful time of my life I think to organize so many people to move uh, and it was several companies that wanted to donate to us it was uh, Eurofins and actually at this point I would like to thank everyone who has donated lab equipment to us Carlo Bio, uh, Eurofins, KTH has donated a lot and we have the Stockholm iGEM team I don't know if you know what the iGEM competition is no? Uh, iGEM uh, it's an international competition for students at uh, at, in colleges and high schools uh, and it's a competition in synthetic biology um, and and the idea is that students gather all over the world I think there is like two or three hundred teams around the world right now uh, and the idea is that they work over the summer with a project in synthetic biology uh, and in August they all go to Boston I think in the US and they have a big jamboree when they when they when they uh, compete in synthetic biology and it's a very important competition I would say because it's driving synthetic biology and if you sign up for the workshops later you will learn everything you need to know about synthetic biology it's really cool and I, I just these guys uh, if you want to know what you can do in a lab, if you gather people with different uh, knowledges and skills and what these people can do in a lab over a summer, then you should talk to, to, to the iGEM team and they have actually donated some stuff to us too, so big shout out. Anyone from iGEM here? No. They're actually at the lab at Albanova working on the lab right now. They will come later. Yeah. So talk to them. It's really cool. And this is some of the equipment we will have downstairs. We have really everything we need to start doing PCR uh, analysis and uh, equipment for uh, synthetic biology, uh, microscopy. Uh, we really are at the point where we can just start. We just need to buy the regences and, uh, and we're ready to go. Um, and uh, that's why we have some lists over here of some workshops uh, that we are planning for and if you're interested it would be really good if you signed up so we know t how many people to plan for and uh, we will talk more about these uh, workshops now so these are some of the workshops we think people would be interested in doing. Uh, I think Jonas, you want to talk about the first one? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> so uh, my name 
is Jonas, and uh, I will not stand here so I don't get blinded. Um, just a very brief introduction of myself. I'm an engineer here from KTH, uh, and after that I went uh, to do a PhD in uh, Karolinska Institute, close to here, where the most part of my work was based on different microscopy and imaging techniques. Um, and why am I interested in Bionifique? And I've been uh, uh, affiliated since last autumn, more or less. And actually, when I started at KTH, one, one thing struck me very uh, early on, that um, all of the different study programs that they have here, biotechnology that I myself started, chemistry, physics, and so on, we all started more or less from scratch, from zero. We didn't know anything more than what you, they teach you in, in high school, really. Uh, and that was true for all the different programs except one, and that was computer science. These guys, when they started, they already knew how to program, some of them in several different languages already, because they all had computers at home, they had access to the internet, they had already taught themselves how to do that, so when they started on these programs, they could learn everything they wouldn't have been able to learn themselves. They could start by project development and uh, how to enter into big software development things and you know things like that uh, and I thought wouldn't it be nice if we could have that for all the other programs as well somehow everyone has a computer more or less at home but not everyone has a biotechnology lab at home so uh, when I heard about this then I thought well this is just too good a chance to miss so I'm really hoping that this could turn into uh, an opportunity for people to do just that so, and then the next question, why microscopy? Seems like an obvious question, but microscopy as a technique, uh, it really allows you to look at the smallest autonomous unit of biology, which is the cell. Uh,